Hello, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create your own schema for NutScript. Now, you need two things. First is a text editor, and I use Sublime Text, but you can also use Notepad++, or if you really want to just make yourself stressed out, regular Notepad. And next, you're going to need a place to create your schema, so I use a source dedicated server, which is kind of like if you were to buy your own server. Or you could just use a regular Gary's mod. So you're going to go to your Gary's mod folder, and then you're going to go to the game modes folder. And I'm going to create a new folder called Skeleton for the schema. And inside the folder you're going to create a new text file and you want to name this the same thing as you named the folder. Now this is going to be helpful in the future if you enable the showing of text extension or file extensions. In Windows 8 you just go to view and there's a checkbox right here. In Windows 7 or XP you press alt some other button another button and opens up a list of checkboxes and you just find that. So we're going to go inside here and quotation mark game mode open curly brace and then we're at a base and for the base since we want to use NutScript since it's a NutScript schema we're going to use NutScript as the base and then for the title you just put title make sure these are all in quotation marks and then we just put skeleton RP for the title and close the curly brace and save. Now we have our game mode text file. We're going to create the actual game mode folder. Inside the game mode folder, you have two files you have init.lua and clinit.lua. Now these two files are ran whenever the game mode starts. But init.lua is for the server, clinit.lua is for the client, so when you join the server. So we're going to need to send the clinit.lua file to the client, so we're going to add, add cslua file, clinit.lua. And then we're going to derive this game mode from the nut script, so we can make a functioning schema. So we use derive game mode function here. And now we go to clinit.lua, and since we're not actually sending any files, since it's already at the client, we're just going to derive game mode. That script. Keep in mind that this isn't a Lua tutorial, and if you want to learn Lua, then just Google it. That's probably the best way to learn. Now you go back to the skeleton folder, and you make a new folder called schema. And this is where the actual schema content is. And there's one file that gets included, and it's called sh underscore schema dot lua. We're gonna open that up. And now, when NutScript loads the schema, it creates a table, a global table that's shared. And shared means that it's ran on both the server and client, so both the server and client have access to the shared table. Keep in mind that this whole file is shared too, since it has the sh underscore prefix. Now, we're going to need to do three things. We need to set the name of the schema, we're going to set the description, and we're going to set the author. So we're going to use this one, the global tables mentioned earlier, which is the schema, all uppercase, dot name equals skeleton rp and this will be appearing in the server browser when you're looking for it and then we're going to set the description which is just schema dot desc which is short for description for the schema and then we set the author 
Uh, you can set the you can set any of these to anything. It really doesn't matter. It's just for showing people. It doesn't actually affect gameplay. I'm gonna save that. And now, if you want to add extra things to your schema, for example, you want to set up a currency, then you'd probably add it here. If you want to include other files, you'd add it here using not.util.include. And you can see all the other functions for NutScript by going to the get the wiki. And if you go to nutscript.rocks, then you can click on documentation and it'll take you there. We're going to set up a currency, so we're going to use click on nut and we're going to go with nut.currency and it tells us which function does what, so not currency dot set and sets the symbol name for the currency. Now for the symbol, the symbol goes in front of the number and we don't want to put anything in front of the number, so we'll just leave it blank. And for the singular, this is the singular version of the noun for the currency, so let's put calcium pill. And then for the plural, this is the plural version, so calcium pills. I'm going to save that and close it. So that's all you need for the SJ schema. This is really bare bones. And you can add a bunch of other things if you want to make more complicated schemas. But for the sake of the tutorial, we're just going to keep it simple. Next, a schema needs factions. So we're going to create a factions folder inside the schema folder. We're going to go inside the factions, and you need at least one faction that anyone can join. So we're going to create a default faction that anyone can join if they were to join the server. And we'll call this humans. Now keep in mind that this has the sh underscore prefix in front, and this is to let NutScript know to send it to both, or to have it run on both the server and client. NutScript will handle the including for you. So I'll open this up, and similar to the schema loading, they have it creates a global table called schema. The factions have a global table called faction. And keep in mind that this is just to store information. It, the table gets deleted after the file is done processing. So you won't be able to use faction everywhere. You'll have to look it up using the list of factions. So we're going to set the... You need three things for factions. You need the name, the description, and a color for that faction. So for the name, we're going to set it to... Let me make the text bigger so it's probably easier for you to see. Faction dot name equals humans. Faction dot description. So it's, it's just like the schema here. How you have schema dot desc. You have faction dot desc. And hold on. There you go. And then we need the color, which is the third thing I said. And we have to create a color object, so you have color, capitalize, open parentheses. And this uses the RGB type of color, and if you don't know how to get that, you can just go open up Google and search RGB color. And this first result for me, so I'm just going to pick a color for the humans. And as you can see here, it's R, G, B, and it corresponds with these three numbers right here. So we're going to put those in the corresponding order, so 246, 212, 145. And that's it. This is a very basic faction. If you want to set the models for the faction, you can use faction.models equals open curly brace and have quotation marks and put model slash something here comma now these aren't actually what we're going to use but this will show you how you would set up 
your own models. So I'm going to delete that because by default in that script, if you don't specify the faction models, it'll just use the Half-Life 2 citizen models. So we're going to close that and we're going to go back to the factions folder and we're going to create another faction. And this will be called Skeletons. I'm going to open up. We're just going to copy and paste these three things since they're mandatory. And we'll just replace the human stuff. And pick another color. And save. Now, let's say we wanted to make this faction so it's only whitelisted. That means it won't be a default faction. So you need to specify that you have faction dot is default and is is lowercase default is capitalized. And this is important since Lua is case sensitive. I'm going to set that equal to false. So that means it's not the default faction, that means we'll require a whitelist. And we want to have it so you have to have a skeleton model. So we're going to do faction.models equals open curly brace. And then I'm going to add the player model. I'm not sure if this is the right model, but it's model slash player slash skeleton dot MDL. And since this list only has one thing, we aren't required to put a comma at the end, but you can if you want. So if you had multiple models, then you'd put a comma and then another quotation mark and add your next model here. But since we don't want an actual police model, we just want a skeleton, we're just going to omit this. Let's keep it like this and save. So that's our very bare bones schema. Now if you wanted to add entities or weapons, you'd, it's just like a normal game, but you'd have the entities folder. Inside the entities folder you have the entities folder again, or your weapons. And if you want to add the plugins to your schema, then you just create a plugins folder. And you'll see that a lot of the schemas have this similar format. So let's go to HL2 RP and we can see that the format is very similar. Go to plugins and I want the books plugins so people can read books while they're role-playing as skeletons. So go back to the skeleton folder, go to plugins and just paste the books plugin in there. And this plugin will just add book items for us. And this is a good way to add content to your schema, is to find some plugins that people have made and add it to your schema as you please. And that is it for the Thought script schema making tutorial. Let's try running this. I'm going to edit the command line. I'm going to change. I already have set it to skeleton, so I'm just going to start my server. And as you can see here, I'm changing game mode to skeleton RP, and it's loaded successfully. There's no errors, which is good. And have a good day.